Scott at Impossible Engine. I wanted to put together a quick tutorial because we're doing a project using V-Ray and Cinema 4D and we had problems finding exactly how to work with those two together. Um, there seems to be a lot of different ways to composite those passes and we found a way that was pretty simple and got us there pretty quick and we thought we'd share because we saw other people trying to do the same thing. So I'll just show you quickly how we did it, at least our base setup. This is our basic scene here. I rendered out just a quick test scene. Here's the RGB image. This is the composited image. You'll notice a slight shift in the two. And after some research and looking into it, I think what's happening is actually in the RGBA image, the flattened image, you're seeing the camera vignetting effects and maybe some color temperature issues as uh, differences as well. But those are all things that you can account for in uh, with a grade node or uh, some other nuke scripts. Anyway, so let's get started. Let me jump over to Cinema 4D. This is a base scene I created that had uh, some textures and things that we were using in the project we needed this on. And this is just a simple setup to show you uh, how we set our Cinema 4D project up. We found this script to be really useful off of the V-Ray for, for C4D site, this um, auto ID. It basically comes in and sets a random color for all of your materials, and I'll show you why we use that later. So in multi-pass, these are the passes that we spit out. Um, I found that you kind of want to include all the passes you might think you might use down the road if you're working on a big project that has multiple scenes. Um, going back and adding more passes later will throw off your scripts because the names change and other things. Um, so if you think you might want refraction down the road, add it at the beginning. If you think you might want... Uh, you know, diffuse or matte shadow or any of these other passes, go ahead and add it. And it'll make your life easier if you're dealing with, you know, 40 some odd scenes or opening up other scripts from other people. We also are including this material ID pass uh, because the object buffer, we could not get the object buffer out of here to work with render ID. It was, looks like there was some weird stuff going on with uh, V-Ray area light and object buffer, so material ID was a good, uh, a good solution for us. And color mapping, this one's important to get your image close to what it needs to be. Linear multiply, oh, I wanted to add one more thing, we're spitting out EXR files. So this may not work exactly the same for other formats. Um, linear multiply, one, one, Gamma we set to 2.2. Linear workflow is checked. All the rest of these settings are, you can adjust as you, as you like. We didn't do anything with these. I'm just going to start a new script. R to read in my EXR file. So here's our EXR file. These are our settings in Nuke. We just left it base. Since it came in with Gamma 2.2 already, we don't have to change the color space or do anything with that. We just left it at default linear. Add a shuffle. The first one we're going to add is GI. The second one we're going to add is lighting. It's our lighting pass. Go ahead and name these as I go. Third one we're going to do reflection. Sorry, shuffle this out. Don't add a reflection node. It's a reflection pass. 
The last one we're going to do for this simple setup is specular. It's our specular pass. So here's our four passes we're going to start with. Between these two, we're going to add a merge. I prefer to do A over B as you move to the right. Set this to plus. You can already see, I'm going to switch back and forth. Here's it through the plus, just adding GI and lighting together. Gets you pretty close already. Add another merge node. A over B. Change it to plus. There's our reflections coming in. Add another merge node. A over B. With specular. There's our original RGBA. There's our composite. So that was close enough for us. There's, like I said, there's a there's a shift in the color, and there's also a vignetting in the original Im image, and I believe that is because of the V-Ray physical camera settings, the white balance, and the vignetting effects. I think that's what's causing that, and those don't come in in the passes. So you're going to have to add those in Nuke. I don't know where those are in the V-Ray passes, and I don't think that they exist. So here we are with our base composite. Since I spat out depth, I can also add that. I want to do a, a Z-Blur. Z-Blur. And with this, I'll choose this depth Y. You can click on Focal Plane Setup to find where you want to be. So now that we have these, we can also use our Material ID passes if we want to add any sort of alpha channels to anything <clears throat> or cut stuff out. or um, We use this in lieu of uh, a working object buffer solution. So shuffle out another node here, another pass. We're going to use this material ID. That's the material ID pass right there. <clears throat> what you can do with this now is you can select colors and key them out. It seems to be a little goofy with transparency so um, I probably would do this a little bit different and if I really had an object that was transparent inside of another object but for showing you how this works it's okay go ahead and add primat you probably use any key you wanted we'll work on this little guy back here If I hit alpha, I can see that I have alpha now coming out of my material ID. Now what you can do with that, let's see if I can get this first time out, is you can copy I want to copy H, uh, alpha to alpha. I'm going to copy it to my plus over here. my merge node over here. I want to pre-molt it and I also want to invert this. So I've got my material ID primat key to select a, a material ID color. I clean that up, I inverted that, I copied the alpha back to my merge node that's at the end of my chain. So we're saying hey merge node take this alpha channel and then I'm going to pre-molt that and then I'm going to add one more merge node I'm going to copy 
what's coming out of here back over my original chain. And now we're here. So what can we do with this? Well, we can add a grade node. We can start playing with a color using that material ID. We can essentially cut things out, adjust things. It's uh, really useful. My script is a mess, by the way. I'm just trying to do this quickly to show this, show you how to do this. One other thing I could show you, um, since we sp spit out a bunch of raw passes as well, you can do other math to get some of these passes. Um, I didn't get too far into these. We use these sometimes, but for a lot of the scenes, this basic setup was enough with additional passes plused in or merged in. Um, it got us where we wanted to be, but you could also take this lighting pass, for example. Let me scoot all this over. So you could do raw lighting, raw light. You can multiply that by diffuse, theoretically. So there we've recreated kind of what we did before using the raw lighting pass. So raw lighting times diffuse here and then plus GI gets us back to where we were earlier and that's out of the raw lighting passes. So you know, with that you can you know, you have more control over these separately if you wanted to grade these before they are um, combined. The regular lighting pass is essentially this, this little setup here. That's it. That's the basic uh, Nuke V-Ray Cinema 4D workflow uh, for us. Um, there's probably a better way to do this. You know, we're just getting into this with Nuke and Cinema 4D and V-Ray. Um, this is, you know, based on pulling together stuff over the internet and finding a simple way that seemed to work for us. Hope it helps somebody out and thanks for watching.